And joining me tonight, criminal defense lawyer Joe Newberger. We're also going to be joined on the phone by U.S. District Attorney Jacob Frankel in Washington. And in a few minutes, we'll be joined by Doug Steiner. He's a Globe and Mail uh, report on business columnist and a former Madoff client. And welcome to Legal Briefs. And Thank Joe, you. let me start off with you right away, just so we, we'll get this right off the table. Uh, the size of this type of scheme, this type of fraud, worst case scenario in Canada, what type of sentence would Mr. Madoff have been looking for, at here? Something in excess of 15 years. Possibly life, but in excess of 15 years. 15? 15. One five. Yeah, not five zero, not 100 years. You know, 15 to 25 years. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Frankel, are you there in, uh, in Washington? I am here, yes. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, first of all, um, as a, as a prosecutor, were you surprised by the size of that sentence? Well, first of all, as a former prosecutor, because if I think if I were still a prosecutor, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be able to speak. And right. have, having been both at the SEC and the Enforcement Division and as a federal prosecutor, I will confess surprise. Yet at the same time, on reflection, what, what, the, what the judge's real objective here was, I think, was to set the outer limit, because for we now defense lawyers, or for career defense lawyers, if in the United States the judge had established a sentence more along the lines of what Bernard Madoff's lawyer was trying to obtain, which was 12 so, years, which was 12 yeah. years, and, he, and there were even some saying, well, maybe the judge would, would stay within the federal sentencing guidelines and go up to, up to 25, we in the defense bar would readily be arguing at any sentencing. Well, Bernard Madoff only got 25 years. How could you possibly consider a sentence of more than 10 years for our client, when, you know, given the disproportionate nature of the Madoff crime? I do think what Judge Chin really was trying to do here was set the upper limit, and boy, did he set the upper limit. And, and really, maybe symbolic mm -hmm. in more ways than one, right? I mean, basically saying that at 150 years, he's, he's even even he got 50 years. I mean, he wasn't he's not going to live that long. Um, um, it, really something more symbolic, I guess. It, in Canada, we call it general deterrence. In the U.S., it's, it's get the message out to that uh, business community that white-collar crime, to the extent of this, is, is going to be hit and hit hard. I think it's a dead-on assessment, but I think there was, there was one other point that the judge was trying to make, and that was that you know the, the victims, unfortunately, have no chance of being made whole or... You know, many you know, may not even uh, get a fraction back from the work of the uh, of the receiver, given the duration and nature of the fraud. I think what the judge was trying to say, in part, you know, to the extent that the United States government has asked for the maximum sentence, um, I'm giving you that. You, know, you you want some satisfaction that this person, you know, this criminal is going to receive 150 years. I'm going to give that to you, the victims, because one of the few things I, the judge, can right. do for you today. All right, Joe. Let me let and let's get back to to show so people can understand from a comparative basis. Uh, on the 27th of June, he ordered Madoff to forfeit about 170 billion dollars uh, U.S. That amount is what the prosecutor said flowed through the main account used to operate the scheme. Uh, again, would we ever see a forfeiture order like that here in Canada? We could. We could. I mean, there's many mechanisms which are in place now to seize assets, seize assets prior to charges being laid. There's the Civil Remedies Act. There's many sections of the code which can be used, the criminal code here in Canada, to be used to seize assets. We have not seen things as typical as they are in the United States because seizures and forfeitures that go on in the United States are far more uh, in number than they right. are here in Canada, but we have the tools and mechanisms in place to do it. You just don't see it. Many fraud cases uh, start off civilly where banks are bringing actions to freeze assets and then to go after um, uh, fraud artists, right. essentially, uh, civilly, and then criminal charges come later. But the ones that start by criminal charges don't always oh, okay. start off with uh, forfeiture or seizures or anything of that nature, but we have the mechanisms. All right, so we got here... Uh Jacob, let me ask you this so people can understand. Um, uh, the issue with respect to the forfeitures, we understand he, uh, U.S. Marshals are going to be able to sell Madoff's $7 million U.S. apartment, his primary residence, but the judge left something for his wife, didn't he? 
Well, he may, I, I, it may be a, a, a something a, something token because in the civil litigation, the, that two point five million dollars is going to be pursued aggressively. And I think you know, just going back to what Joe was just saying, I think there are a lot of similarities in the tools that that uh, the government has available in Canada that we have here in the United States. But I think the the the, the U.S. reputation, for better or for worse, is that. Whatever tools are in the government's arsenal are used rather aggressively. Yeah, well, you got to remember. Absolutely true. Yeah, Jacob, <laughs> I, I don't know if you ever follow Canadian sentencing, but uh, uh, a person in Canada convicted of first degree murder is eligible for parole after 25 years. Uh, we don't send people to prison for 150 years. Uh, for be- as you said, for better, for worse. Could, could, I, could I just ask? I'm curious about what the uh, what an appeal might uh, render. Will uh, a court of appeal reduce that sentence? Yeah, yeah. Joe, I, I, that, it's an interesting issue because I, 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 you know, I think early on there was some talk about um, you know the, the 150 years potentially being reduced to 50. Right. I do think it's possible that the appeal. Could, I mean, that there could be an appeal, and the judge was very careful to articulate his reasons with the hope that this sentence would be sustained on appeal. Right. But at the end of the day, the worst that could happen, worst being in terms of the, an appellate court saying, no, this sentence really was excessive, it's going to come back to Judge Shin. Big deal if he drops the one off the front. Yeah. You're still going to end up with <laughs> a 50-year yeah, That's sentence. right. Yeah, yeah so, and that's exactly it. You know what we should do here? Jacob, why don't you tell us quickly, because I, I just realize that some people may not understand the Ponzi scheme and what it is. What what essentially was this fraud? Did he have accomplices? Is this something he did on his own? Well, I don't think anybody believes that he did this on his, on his own or with this one Rockland, uh, Rockland County accountant. And I do think that the, char, the, the fact that Bernard Madoff you know, is, has now been sentenced in some respects will clear the decks so that people can, will really return their focus to who else is criminally culpable and who else is civilly culpable. Your question, though, is really what is the Ponzi scheme? In essence, the United States government alleges that for, for more than 30 years, Bernard Madoff was taking money from Investor One, telling Investor One or one through 1,000 right. that I've invested for you in you know, big name securities and, and have a wonderful options trading uh, you know, strategy uh, that is continuing to generate profits even in, in down markets when in fact investor 1010 and 1020 when they put money in those funds are going to pay the investors line. 1 oh, through yeah. 1000 right. and they never were in the investments underlying them never right. investment all right we got to i got to i'm just going to take a break here gentlemen we're going to put up the numbers legal briefs always interactive we want to hear from you your questions your comments here's how to reach us within 